So, hey guys, welcome back. And in this video, as you can tell by the title, we're going to be, well, I'm going to show you around the museum. I've spent the last couple of days, touching a week, building since the, the bunk bed video last week. Um, and it's based around the ash heap, so everything about the law, the decorations, it's a very labor intensive area of the map. So we're going to try and keep around that theme. Uh, I will briefly touch up on a mini series I'm going to be doing about this as well. Uh, so each region of the map is going to have its own appropriate museum, uh, similar to how I've done this with the ash heap. Uh, so this is actually located in one of the two or three lakes or ponds around the ash heap. And up on that hill there is where load bearing takes place. So occasionally we will get a lot of enemies trying to break up the house and everything. So a little bit annoying. And you come upstairs and you can see the two candles as well. But the idea is to keep it much like a, a museum is. So you've got the light switch uh, just to keep power on and off. Because again, in buildings you would have a light switch. So uh, you've also got your reception desk just to say to people, "Here's your ticket. You can go in." Uh, oh, you'll have to wait by the side, which is this is kind of the waiting area as well. This is mainly just to tell people the museum's bu busy at the moment. Wait around until other people have left, then you can walk on in. So as we do come in, uh, let's just shut the door behind us. Um, we have a small like partition wall to the left. Uh, that is actually three stacked shelves, uh, rug glitched back to back, uh, front to front. So it looks like a half shack wall. Um, now the sheep squatch event used to be around here, not free range, but the meat week one. So I thought it might look somewhat appropriate on that wall there. So uh, as we come on in, we've got the first little section. Let's shut this door again. Uh, we have... Uh, kind of a plant, you see a lot of plants around there to make it look more decorative. So the first display unit is trying to keep around what is needed in a mine. So it's general self and health and safety, not self and safety. Uh, so the breather just allows you to breathe in normal oxygen instead of the, uh, the fumes and toxic air that drives all 76 players insane. Uh, so on to the next little area as well, you have different type of ores. Uh, the pickaxe is used obviously to pick up the ore and the small red canister is what you would use to carry around your lunch for example or carry around uh, little fragments of ore, uh, that kind of jazz really. And then uh, we do see Scorpio at the end of the hall, let's give him a wave, hey, there's Scorpio. He actually inspired a lot of ideas for this build as well and uh, we will see one of those shortly. Uh, so in the next section, it is a kind of a small spade you use to pick up the ore, carry it to a, have a dustbin or a trailer to bring it up and down the mine so you can uh, smelt it into ore and scrap. Uh, you'll notice here as well, I have put two frogs in the display unit. This is actually a rug glitch table. Uh, it's a quite difficult method. Well, there's two rugs. When I say difficult, I mean messy. Uh, so it's not entirely everyone's cup of tea. So, as uh, you see in this display unit, we have a interesting looking plant called a Moist Rad Kelp. Uh, this is actually only obtainable through Arctos Farmer. You don't have to do the Project Paradise event. Uh, it is just lying on the floor. And it's the, one of the only few plants that actually emit a, kind of a smoky mist. Uh, I can't think of the other one, but it was Ice Stella who mentioned it. And uh, again, a sting wing to say, hey, look at this annoying a-hole flying around about to sting you. So again, you've got a miscellaneous assortment of stuff. The uh, small red box is actually dynamite, if you didn't know. Uh, so that would be used to clear caverns and walkways. An interesting little fact as well, the, uh, the coffee tins are used by the miners back in the ash heap uh, about tommy knockers. So you would uh, put out... Uh, a coffee tin in the mine to thank these tommy knockers who would knock on the mine wall to say it is safe to work here uh, and anyone who's really been around the ash heap knows it's owned by the horn Wright and another company whose name i can't remember they employed robots and the excavator of power armor so that display unit there was just to say here's an article a lot of these miners are losing jobs the sign is also in protest for that as well 
and uh, you've got maps as well so I tried to keep it on point as much as I can and again this is just to say hey there's a gift shop up here and I thought that was a great reason to really put play of ending in there as well uh, this is uh, Scorpio's uh, kind of adapted idea. He's uh, got a much better one than this, but I thought I would adapt it by just placing a conduit on a plant and just move them together. It's a pretty simple method, but got to make sure you've got support because, again, building in this game is a nightmare. And again, it's a fairly open area, so even if the the, the mu museum is busy, you can like sit on the floor, you can sit on the couch, the couches, the uh, the chairs. And uh, again, there's, there's Scorpio checking out his neat little, neat little chair in the corner, and yeah. So again, certain museums may have a cafe. Um, I've been in a museum where they have a cafe and a balcony, so I thought, you know, why not have a balcony and somewhat of a nice view. Uh, so again, you can always have a drink instead of a cafe. It's more of a punch bowl with whiskey in, so it it does the job maybe. Uh, so we're going to go and turn the uh, inside lights off. Uh, in daytime you won't really notice, but uh, I'm going to do a nighttime tour as well with the lights on and off. Uh, it really gives it, gives it justice uh, with the lights and really puts emphasis on how well the, the light scattering is. Uh, I do prefer this build at nighttime as well. So as I do one last loop around, you'll notice that this end of the, the build is quite barren compared to the rest. Uh, this is actually because I ran out of room. The uh, displays take up a considerable amount of uh, space on your build limit. Didn't know that until about three days before I finished so bit of a conundrum but I think I did an okay job. And yeah so a bit more emphasis on the series. The series is going to be based around each region of the map. So, for example, you've got the Responders, which is the my Responders previous build. You've got the Toxic Valley, the Savage Divide. They're all going to be decorated appropriately. Uh, so, hopefully, they're coming up in the next couple of weeks. And a big thanks for the nice feedback as well for the bunk bed video. Uh, I'll catch you all in the next video, guys. I hope you have a nice day, and I will see you all soon.